So the Internet's roots are in academia. Uh, it's not really a military network by any stretch of the imagination, and never was. Uh, and in the original academic context, the Internet was trusted. Everyone on it had a government contract, and if they misused their Internet connection, they would lose that contract, lose connection to the network. And of course, now we have billions of people using it. It is, uh, the Internet has become humanity's nervous system for all intents and purposes. And uh, a lot of those billions of people are either incompetent or malicious. Um, so in that original design, we had the idea that uh, you needed to know where a packet was going uh, for operational reasons. In order to get it where it was going, you would have to look at the, the destination address. But there was no operational reason to look at the source address. And as a result, there is almost no control at all over what source address you use when you send a packet. So in an untrusted internet, uh, which is relying on protocols devised for a trusted internet, uh, we have the problem that in a request response protocol, for example, DNS, uh, you can transmit a request toward some extremely powerful DNS name server that has somebody else's source address on the request. And that name server will send their response to the purported source address that it receives. It has no way of knowing that that source address was forged. And that means that if you do this uh, at high volume, you send a, a long stream of requests toward these very powerful name servers, they will completely wipe the victim off the map by overloading their internet connection with responses to questions that they never sent. It is a lot less uh, desirable to launch a DDoS attack if you have to send the packets using your own address, uh, either because there won't be any kind of an amplification, so you get no leverage from the attack, or because the true source addresses will lead back to you, and thus your attack will only last a few minutes until some group of uh, ISPs is able to get together and find out where it's come from. So by allowing you to mask where the attack came from and get some amplification from these very powerful servers uh, out there in the internet that can't tell your forging queries to them, uh, it, it turns into a, a serious enabler. So I think that if we did not have uh, this type of source address forgery available on most of the internet where the botnets are, uh, that the incentives to launch DDoS attacks would be less. Uh, there, there's a fair amount of ignorance on this, this topic, right? A lot of people, when they hear that source address validation is not the default and that it's uh, widely practiced and it is the reason for a lot of the 400 gigabit DDoS attacks that you hear about against Spam House or uh, against Cloudflare or whatever, uh, they're surprised. They, they're just, it amazes people to, to think that the internet could be this flaky. Um, and when they hear about it, a fair number of people just say, well, I'll turn that on. That seems like a responsible thing to do. It can't be that hard. And, the, and they just get it done. So I don't think we have uh, a universal argument against this. I think there's a fair amount of just professional respect and professional self-respect that will uh, mobilize source address validation everywhere uh, if we can just get the word out. Now, uh, there will be some corners where there will be arguments against it, uh, economic arguments of the form, uh, gee, I would be spending all this money to get it done, but the only beneficiaries would be my competitors, Heart, you know, I can't justify that, etc. And for those people, we may need a change to the insurance regime or perhaps to the uh, ISO 27000 or 9000 compliance regimes to where in order to be considered a sort of compliant, responsible, upstanding organization, this will be a checklist item for your auditors. Uh, so I think I can safely predict that this is not going to be a short road uh, and that unless we can get the compliance industries, the security, or excuse me, the insurance industries, perhaps even some uh, securities and exchange people from you know, various stock exchanges around the world to treat this as a checklist item for any company that wants to be thought safe and responsible, uh, that we will still be looking at this problem at least 10 years from now and probably 10, 20 years from now as well.